Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Historical Lights Nightly Chat and Toast, night 41, I believe. Uh, great to have you guys back with us. We got with us our co-host, Brother Robert Marshall. How are you doing down there in Waco, brother? We are doing great in Waco. Uh, had a study session with a fellow craft today out at the bridge. And um, that was the highlight of the day, I guess. <laughs> yeah it was a it was a gloomy one here we had a kind of a crazy storm mid-morning-ish uh closer to lunchtime but it was a interesting 15 minutes uh really high winds hail rain and then the rest of the day was just crappy so yeah can't win them all all sun here all day i'm actually a little sunburned Oh, I'm still sunburned. Yeah, I, I realized that. I was actually trying to put on a collared shirt and a bow tie tonight, and uh, that collar is rubbing my neck raw, so back with the soft hoodie it was. Let's see. I'm trying to get the Facebook pulled up, and it's running slow here, so trying to see everybody's comments, but uh, we do appreciate everyone jumping in with us this night and every night uh 41 nights in a row man can you believe it's gone on this long yeah i'm afraid it might end up going longer but we'll see <laughs> there's our good double audio we get every night awesome now we got it pulled up here so uh we've got a whole bunch of you live but make sure you please drop those comments so we can uh see who's with us this evening that's the only way we really get a name to the name to the number uh, we've got my wife in here, of course, getting everything shared out. Appreciate that. And uh, I'm going to throw her on Front Street here because uh, I failed to last night. I got sidetracked. She was sitting just to the right of me last night getting stuff shared out and needed to get up and leave and was scared to be seen on camera. So jumped about three feet onto the floor. <laughs> Army crawls. <laughs> Army crawled around the corner. And I was so tempted to just like pick up the computer and pan it, but I figured it was oh, so <laughs> that's really funny i was sitting here trying to keep a straight face so hard last night it was tough <laughs> <laughs> let's see who we got in here with us uh we got brother justin staley back with us brother bowman brother fletcher brother pratt hey chris neely see you here uh we've got brother johnny rocket brother maddox of course gary barber uh brother samuel Oh, and the list goes on. And we've got uh, Most Worshipful Morrow in here with us. And I think I see Most Worshipful Kellerman up there as well. So All the Most Worshipfuls. Oh, huh? And Most Worshipful Borum. Man, we're, yeah, yeah, no pressure. No pressure. The brass is in the house. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, brother, I, don't, I, I think I see the same glass there. But what are you toasting with tonight, just out of curiosity? Uh, this is a... Uh, guava dragon fruit soda mix with uh, crystal head vodka and a sprig of rosemary man i'm gonna have to step my game up because each time i ask you this yours over the last week or so has just gotten more and more elaborate and i'm just going back and forth between the same two drinks i'm just getting creative <laughs> here <laughs> yeah i'm yeah i might have to do that man so I, i'm back with the uh the banknote scottish whiskey here and uh, I, I grabbed the uh, Phil Lathy Society uh, toasting cannon to use nice. this evening. I never thought that I would ever have a reason to go through all of my toasting cannons. And now I feel like I just don't have enough. I thought I had quite a few, but apparently not. But you know what's on my mind, man? We've done this as Historical Light for 41 nights now. We've got a handful of nights at least left. And then we'll see what happens from there. I'm kind of feeling like historical night or historical light needs a, a custom toasting cannon. Maybe that's something we can get on the website for sale. Yep. Agreed. Like Make it idea. so. Do what? Make it so. Make it so. That's right. Well, I seen a uh, most wishful uh, Tony Borum on the list here, and I just had to share this talking about the symbolism and everything. Got this in the mail. This is the Grandmaster's coin this year. I just thought it was a phenomenal oh, design. Wow. Isn't that cool? I yeah, love that's gorgeous. And then you flip it over. 
got his name, Grand Lodge of Kansas, of course, got the seal and the year in there. But I just, yeah, I don't know. That design wow. list, I really, really like that. And that is so cool. At least since I've been in masonry, I have not seen a non circular coin come out of Kansas. So that kind of caught my attention right away. It's like, ooh, nice. I like it. Yeah. So that's, that's cool. really, really cool. Well, with that, when I'm grabbing trinkets, it's my night to share. And uh, I've got a pretty cool share this evening, actually. So I'm sure some of you have seen this before, but I was a little nervous about it. And uh, we were over at uh, my mother-in-law's house and we actually found this item. So uh, I was stoked to know that it was you know, still around. So, man, it was a few days after I was raised as uh, third degree. Um, of course, my father-in-law was you know, my mentor, uh, my Masonic father coming into masonry. He was the whole reason I, I joined masonry. Uh, I had that family history, but I didn't have that connection there. He's the one that, that bridged that gap there for me. Um, right after I was raised as a Mason, he popped this around my neck without me knowing what it was. And this was actually a Master's Achievement Award from his year as Master oh. of Lodge in Exa, which is the lodge that I was raised in. What's the, uh, 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 on the medal there? Uh... It's got the uh, past Master's emblem, says Master's Achievement up top, award at the bottom. But uh, Okay. And there you go. They're a little different today, but this is when he was master. This is uh, how they looked at the time. And everybody knows, you know, it says master's achievement, but it, it's truly a lodge achievement award. Like the master cannot do this alone. It, it, it takes a functioning lodge, a willing lodge um, to do or commit all the requirements that you have to do to get the points to earn it. So sounds like Texas Vanguard Award where you where yeah. you cross off a lot of goals and, and different types of functions and precisely uh, yeah okay cool yeah so there's there's a point system behind it and your lodge has to do so many things throughout the year um, mm -hmm. have so many officers at different events attend required events all this good stuff so yeah. you know what I've told guys is really it's it's stuff that your lodge should be doing in the first place so yep that's the exact it, thing there's an award yeah. <laughs> you, know, you get some recognition for it so it's nothing really crazy above and beyond it's just what a normal functioning lodge should be doing. Yeah. But so he, expectations. Precisely. So he threw that around my neck before I knew where, what it was. I mean, just days after becoming Master Mason. And uh, he challenged me with that and said, you know, within your career as a Freemason, I know that you're going to become an officer at some point. You're going to work your way up to a master of the lodge, which at the time I thought was just like, no way. That, that's out, outlandish to even think. Um, and he goes, my goal or my challenge to you is that you go uh, be the best master you can be of your lodge, get the master's achievement award, and then I expect mine back. So that was some pressure right off the bat uh, that kind of went through my Masonic career. Um, well, it became a whole lot more serious. And kind of as many of you know, uh, during my year is... Uh, master is when Angela was struggling with cancer uh, and you know for especially towards the end there we saw it was not going the direction that we wanted it to um, but I did end up earning it um, through my lodge being awesome and uh, sticking by my side and making sure that we got all those points and we had a rough year of it too because there was actually some Grand Lodge um, changes that year they changed school of instruction from springtime to fall, which really kicked us because we had actually already did our school of instruction that year. So then I had to convince all these old guys that didn't want to go to go a second time. <laughs> so we kind of double earned it on a few things, but it was, it was a fantastic moment to be able to uh, receive this. And this is the new one. This is a, a breast jewel. It's got the uh, seal of the Grand Lodge of Kansas in there. And again, like, like I said, uh, not by my merit alone in the least. Uh, it was definitely, you know, you, you can't do this without a well-functioning lodge, a willing lodge to have your back. And they, they definitely have my back. And uh, we had a great year. And like I said, I mean, we, we earned some points twice just out of necessity. Uh, if you give me one second here, I've got a pretty cool picture because obviously, uh, 
Angelo made that challenge to me. Uh, where did that go? Made a challenge to me that uh, when he got, or when I earned mine, that I would have to give his back. And I had that dang picture that pulled a cat? up. Do what now? Is that a cat? <laughs> yeah. Every night I've got a different wildlife animal crawling I didn't around. I know you here. had a cat. We do have a cat. This is Kiki. How Egyptian of you. I know, right? She, when she wants uh, attention every now and then, she goes full force and there's no stopping her. I feel like the eye of providence on uh, most horseful bulls corn goes well with the cat. The question is, is it an eye of raw or an eye of Horus? Right. <laughs> I guess, since it's nighttime now, it's an eye of Horus. Let's see. I'm going to have you keep talking, Robert. If you give me two seconds, I'm going to find this picture. I thought I had it saved, but apparently I... Uh, so off. we saw the uh, eye of providence on uh, most horseful borum's coin. We also saw on the backside the uh, Grand Lodge of Kansas seal. Uh, I found an article from the mid to late 1800s uh, from Kansas describing uh, the seal as representing a Wyandot native. And I believe his name was John Chivington, who later became the first grandmaster of Colorado. Uh, and so uh, if you take a close look at the seal, you'll see uh, Chivington in his top hat and the Wyandotte native in his traditional garb uh, because uh, there were early uh, Masons in Kansas who were Native Americans like the Wyandotte people who uh, had come from uh, the Huron Nation further northeast at an earlier period as well as Chivington and uh, uh, your more expected Anglo settlers. Uh, and I've always thought it was one of the more beautiful seals in the, the nation because of the blend of cultures represented on it. I would agree, man. I, I really, really enjoy the symbolism behind our seal, 100%. And there's, there's actually, uh, so me, uh, Robert Johnson, and Trevor from my lodge made a ride out when we had Robert down here for lodge research. Uh, and we actually got to go view the grave of one of the founding members of uh, Kansas Masonry. And uh, kind of like uh, Brother Prince Hall, how his grave, his wife was buried on the on the opposite side. Um, same way with this one. I'm struggling to remember his name right now, but it's a beautiful uh, tombstone out in Wyandotte County. And uh, we're able to find that. It's kind of a bear. <laughs> it looks so simple from the picture. I'm like, oh, here we go. It's on find a grave. Got a good backdrop to compare it to. And we got out there and it's like everything in every direction looked exactly like that backdrop. <laughs> uh, and it was a very large cemetery. So I felt kind of bad. Uh, Had RJ okay. out there, you know, sweating our butt off, walking one side to another, but uh, we found it. <laughs> it was pretty cool to see. And there's there's uh, quite a few more um, downtown in Wyandotte. Um, that I need to go see and I just, I haven't uh, got myself to. Okay, my wife finally found the photo. Sorry about that guys, I had it already and uh, dropped the ball last minute apparently. But uh, yeah, I just haven't been able to get out there, have the time to go find those. Um, but maybe there'll be another uh, Historical Light Live here soon. We'll go visit one of those during the day. Um, I was telling Robert uh, a while back here that I think we should do one from the Mount Moriah Mausoleum um, that is, to me, a very, very powerful um, monument in the city, um, where it's actually a mausoleum that seconds as a Masonic Lodge room right in the middle of the cemetery. And uh, it's just, it's phenomenal. Very, very cool. Those are cool. I have like to do that as a live. New Orleans has a really neat one. There's a few around Texas, too. Is that but right? New Orleans has the coolest one I've been to. Well, she's trying to send it to me here. We're going to go ahead and toast because we're at 901. And as soon as this image pops up, we will uh, we'll get a share screen here. So, Robert, I think I've toasted twice now. I'm going to hand it over to you tonight. To well, I'm doing the toast. I didn't know I was doing the toast. Well, that, that makes it even funner, though. We'll throw you under the bus here real fast. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, a toast to the absent brethren, uh, the brethren who cannot be with us because uh, 
COVID-19 is preventing us from meeting in person and to the absent brethren who cannot be with us because they have made the journey to that undiscovered country, the celestial lodge above. To the absent brethren. To the absent brethren. Cheers. 41 toast down. All right, those pictures did come through. Let me uh, see if I can share my screen here. All right, let me know when you see that. It's coming through you, there it is. All right, so this was uh, this was getting towards the end there. And of course, you know, Angelo, he didn't like to show it to nobody. So he sucked it up and he wanted me to uh, put on my, my uh, Grand Lodge regalia there and present it back to him, of course. So we did that. He put on his, all his shiny stuff and put on a strong face there. Um, that's an awesome photograph, man. It is, man. I, it, it means a lot to me. But that's, uh, that's when I was presenting back his Master's Achievement Award. Um, kind of complete that deal there. And are you seeing the photo switch? Yeah, the, where you're hugging. Yeah, that, that one was a powerful one to me, man. You, you can see the emotion in his eyes there. and uh, yep. Yeah, that just, it, it meant the world to him and it meant the world to me, so. Um, Beautiful. Kind of the whole, the whole point behind this though, is I didn't know where his had gone. Um, after I returned it back to him, it, you know, he was struggling with cancer at that point, but uh, he still was making one or two meetings here and there. He was really pushing through it. And uh, he shared with me, he goes, I really like that challenge that we did. I'm going to continue it on and I'm going to give it to another brother. And I said, oh, cool. And I didn't think any more about it. Um, but then when he passed away, that story really means something to me. So I've been wondering where it was. Um, oh, mother no. Yeah. Is it lost? Well, that, well, not now. We, we found it. But uh uh, it, it was hid away in the house and she had looked around. She couldn't find it before, but she was looking around the other day when we were there and actually came by it. So it just, it struck a lot of emotion with me because that was just a, a powerful part of my Masonic journey. Uh, just a, you know, a great piece of symbolism behind that. They'll always remind me of that. So uh, I'm really proud of you to stick this in my collection along with mine. That is, that is kind of his that. original one then. Yeah. You yeah. did get it back. Wow. Yeah. So that just, yeah, it meant a lot to me. He had it stowed away somewhere, huh? <laughs> he did, yeah. Had it tucked away with with another jewel that uh, I might share another time. It was such, a, such a recent thing to do. Right? Exactly. Uh, I put it away and then stowed it away for you to get it later. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. That's cool, man. Yeah. Well, guys, we really appreciate you joining in with us. Uh, sorry about the mishap with the photo there, but I hope you guys were, uh, were sticking around and be able to see that to the end. Uh, like I said, it was just a really powerful story for me. Uh, kind of depicts a large part of my Masonic journey. Uh, just, you know, that symbolism goes a long ways. But Absolutely. night 41, we've, uh, we've really, really appreciated having you guys stick with us every night so far. And uh, hope that you keep sticking with us through the end of this. Uh, it's been a great journey and it's not quite done yet. So we will see you guys tomorrow evening, 845. We have a, uh, a special guest tomorrow. Robert, is that is that right? It's kind of a mystery, I think, though. You heard anything many, about that? Many things are mysteries in this world, Alex. That's true. That's true. Like Robert's darkness over there. We just don't understand it, but... Anyways, some things have... are not meant to be understood. <laughs> Anyways, guys, Only... we have a, uh, a mysterious mystery guest for toast number 42. So I'm not quite sure who that is, but I hope you guys join back tomorrow evening, 845, and you will find out with us. And uh, we will share a little bit more history, chat with the brothers, and of course, give our 9 p.m. toast. So until then, stay safe, be well, take time to save some history. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers. Cheers.